Hello, Selectors, and welcome to the Life Burst Podcast. I think this is episode 32. Oh my goodness. Yeah, almost one full year of We Cross down. Almost. November well, 6th. Oh yeah, I thought you meant the podcast, and I was like, I don't think we started that until January? Yeah, December, something like that. December? We, like yeah, pretty early. We'll do an anniversary thing when it comes to um, But yeah, we are almost, we're almost one year into the English We Cross. Oh yeah. my God, what a journey it's been. It's been pretty crazy. Speaking of a pretty crazy journey, <laughs> how was your We Cross week? <laughs> uh, wow, what a question. Um, to be honest, I actually have not been playing a whole lot of We Cross lately, except... For the, uh, what is it called? Selector circuit that we did? Selector circuit we did. We fit that one in. Yeah. Um, And that was actually a lot of fun. I got to play with one of our selectors, Autumn, who, by the way, is an incredible player. Yeah. Like, she is really, really great at this game. It's such a such a cool experience because I got to watch her play um, against the other guy that we were going up Eden. against for our team. Eden. Yeah, Eden. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and that was actually a really cool experience because we really love interacting with fellow selectors like you guys. So anytime that we get to do that as like a player on player sort of like finding that kind of common ground is yeah. something that I really like to do. It's the same reason why, um, playing the ceremonies is a lot more fun when you have people that that you're playing with that you either recognize or you know, because then it feels like you're participating in a yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. So that was a really neat experience. Yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful that I got to be included in that. It's true. Yeah, I, I, I lost round one um, with my partner, Kevin, although mm-hmm. it's not Kevin's fault. Kevin did great. <laughs> Kevin won his round. I lost both of my games. Same here. I'm so sorry, Autumn. I'm so I, sorry. I, on, on my end, I will say I'm not one to be like bad beat stories. I, I hate bad beat stories. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you lose in the game sometimes, and sometimes it comes down to bursts, and sometimes it comes down to not drawing the right cards. But regardless, it, it was a game. You play If you played your best, you should be happy with the fact that you played your best. And if you lost while you still played your best, I th- actually, I consider that good because I'm like, yeah, look, I, I did everything I I could and yeah I, sometimes I you win. just lose sometimes um and so it was the same it was the same for for me on that one um round one i went against um uh my opponent my opponent had um a deck designed to be x which is what i i was playing um because we could we couldn't pick our own decks basically our teams basically we could make our decks but our teams had to be dxm Mm -hmm. um and what's interesting is is what we're finding out from the selector circuit is uh dxm is not as scary as as everyone once thought if you know how to beat it you can consistently beat it (laughs) yeah so all the decks that we're up against the i i'm finding that the create the content creators are the ones who are losing all their matches and it's because (laughs) it's because they're the easiest ones to beat in terms of their their deck i mean it was pretty obvious what what uh teams we were going to be playing but um on that note actually uh Autumn and I would love to do a podcast together where we kind of go through our thought process with our experience with that whole thing. Yeah, man. So if you guys want to see that, leave it in the comment section down below. Give it, uh, give this video a like and subscribe so yeah. you don't miss it. Yeah. So anyways, I'll just, I'll just say this. You can consistently beat X or Deus if you plan against it correctly. Yeah. Um, and it's not as scary as, as one might thought. Uh, there's also a lot less deck options that you can choose from when you don't have Deus as a center that is super flexible as a center and uh, Machina as a center that's pretty, pretty or not, sorry, not center, as an assist. Mm-hmm. That is a super good assist line, Machina. I would have to agree there. Um, so, but it was it was a good experience. It was fun. Um, it, was a, it was a good experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm happy that we, we did it too. Uh, again, <laughs> again, sorry to Kevin. I'm, my bad. I did, did my best. <laughs> I, I, I won both die rolls. And as soon as I run the die rolls as X and I saw that my opponent was on some kind of aggro, I was like, well, well, well I'm, un, I'm unfavored. I'll do my funny. best to fight uphill, but it's going to be an uphill fight. And it did. It just it ended like exactly what I thought it would be, where I played 100% optimally. My opponent played 100% optimally. Uh, it went to a coin, co- a coin toss, and the person who played, who was the one who attacked first, would win. Mm-hmm. So it ended up being like that, and and that is actually a pretty good transition 
into Tiffany doesn't want me to call it the the sunset sunrise shows. She wants a better <laughs> name like... than that. So if you guys can think of a of a better name than something uh, of one meta closing and the next meta opening, leave it in the comments down below. We should do it like concert themed. Like this is this is the final encore, and then we go to like. I don't know. The, the, I don't know the second the, band. I yeah, I hear you. It's yeah. it's uh, it's something set second set, but then we're actually just literally this is talking the about this is the fourth of set. <laughs> this, and then we're moving on to what is I don't know. There's got to be for those of you that are super into music. First of all, please movements. don't <laughs> movements. First of all, please don't come for me in the comments. <laughs> music is really not my forte, but please let let us know your suggestions in the comments below. So um. We we are ending we are ending one, which is we are now ending set four and we're moving into set five. Do, 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 do. Curiosity Diva with uh Ki Kirun. Kiru Kirun? Yeah, that one. Kiru Kirun. They have five U's on their last one. <laughs> okay. Just so you know. I, that's how I, I've had to type it up in the YouTube. R.I.P. Like, my boop, boop, tongue boop. trying to pronounce that piece. Um not the new one, the one that they the ki kiruru, kirurira or whatever. Yeah. Luckily you won't see it too much, I don't think. Um oh, I'm I don't think, curious. I don't think it'd be really, really good. M the funny thing is, I actually don't love uh Miko Miko as a center. Um <gasps> but but I mean no one does. She's the heel. Um <laughs> But, but, but it's doing something in, in Japan right now, actually. Oh. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting, right? This atomic deck that exists in America now as of set five and also uh, is going to exist in, in the Japanese meta. Um, the main center that you use is Deus, which is a black center, right? And you use a, a blue assist and that being Madoka, right? Mm -hmm. Just by virtue of swapping out, you don't, your access to blue being center Elrig and then your assist being some other black that you have to run. It actually opens up green as an option for the third color. Super strange. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, but green has some synergies with atomic, not yet in the Japanese meta. So, so Miku Miku is actually doing some, a fair amount of rounds there right now, which is pretty crazy. Miku Miku, I Miko Miko. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Not so... <laughs> not the not the critically acclaimed uh, virtual. Yeah, Sarah. the highly skilled uh, virtual uh, Miku. Um, so it, I don't know, it's interesting enough that they do that. But uh, but we're talking today. Uh, we're going to be saying goodbye to set four and hello to set five. And I'm actually really excited about that because I played while well, while well, you were out um gallivanting around the world uh yeah i'm really sorry i've been so absent but sometimes like real life just like dude, you, you gotta like handle dude, stuff <laughs> re real life kicked our butt our butt cen censored <laughs> myself there <laughs> i gotta let you guys know the panic that just ran across his eyes is exquisite <laughs> uh, kicked our butt this this last month and a half and i mean we were we were just like it was like every single weekend we were swamped and that's why like i feel we, we i feel like a fish out of water right now we pre-recorded so many podcasts because we were like oh this is gonna be impossible for us to do so we're finally sitting back down at the table for a live recording I know. um and well, we're not we're not live we are alive right now <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it uh and and so but but while you were out i yeah. played a lot of we cross uh, as probably a way to deal with my loneliness um and i played a lot of set four like a ton of set four so i i i know what's going on with set four and let me tell you i'm so excited to be done with set four I know that's going to be strange because, like, we're going into this world that apparently has the new Boogeyman, Atomic Deus, mm -hmm. um, which is a good deck, but it's not unbeatable, guys. Just, just a heads up. But I'm I mean, no deck is. I'm so tired of playing We Cross a turn four format. And, and we're finally getting into, with this set moving forward, We Cross starts to turn into a turn five format. And that extra turn feels so much better. Than just being like going into turn five, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then and then just being like aggro. Who wins the coin flip? Good game, you won. You know, like mm -hmm. actually, if you win the coin flip, you probably lose the game because you attack second. Isn't it strange how that's been working out? It's just three attack phases are not enough for a person to win, and four attack phases are. Well, especially when you're going up, like I mean, let's let's call them what they are, like a a, a what's it called? 
um, a grade A. Is that what they called in the anime? Like a grade A team. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You're talking about the DXM. tiers. Yeah. Yeah, like a... I mean, they're not S tier, right? Because that's no. just... That would be DX, like eternal Yeah, DXM, role. I think, is a tier they're a tier i don't think there's an s tier technically in the anime but Probably if there not. are it would be eternal girl it would just s. be eternal girl and like that's it yeah so um and it really 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 showed in this set like i know that the anime is more like supplemental to the game but when you when you've like kind of looked at them both side by side it's so obvious that like dxm was a, a beast what's, coming out of the game. What's funny or is the, the, the best counter for DXM in set four was Hirana. Mm. Not not Hirana No Limit, by the way. Hirana Midrange. Um, just because that deck could consistently put on a clock to win on turn five and also had Madoka Clap to slow the decks down long enough to, to, to win. Mm-hmm. And... For what it's worth, Deus didn't have the tools to basically be like, I'm an amazing, flexible center yet. Mm-hmm. It does now. Um, but it was it was almost there. Um, the other deck that I think actually played really well against X was Tomago um, 2.0. Mm-hmm. Um, so it ended up being that kind of thing. And, and, and so it was basically like, hey, are you playing an aggro deck? If you are, the chances are very good that you'll win. Or are you playing a mid-range deck and you're you're hoping you have the tools to get to turn five, but you might mm-hmm. not exactly have all of the tools, right? Yeah, I mean, even coming from like a, like a, I mean, you guys know me, I I am a center Ott player whenever and wherever I can play it. And Ott actually did give X a run for their money. It was extremely difficult in our play testing to actually beat the deck, mm-hmm. beat uh, Ott against a center X. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't an impossible task, but it was incredibly difficult. Yeah. Because because of that more mid rangey feel, Ott I feel like fared better against X because like I've described Ott's deck as a gas pedal before. So you can kind of control your speed as a player against something that's super hyper right. aggro and still try and slow them down. But what ended up happening almost in every single game, of course, was the Ener Burn. Right. So when you have, I agree, I'm, this is all to say I agree with you, that mid-range decks that can help to slow down your opponent, like your aggro, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to, uh, didn't we experience that X is also susceptible to Ener Burn? Even though they are an Enerburny deck, they can get color screwed, right? Color screwed. They, they can, you can cut, you can keep them off of black, and if you keep them off of black, then they can't day a shield for mm-hmm. a full three prevent damage. And if they can't prevent a day a shield for all three damage, you're likely to win a, as a deck putting pressure against them. Yeah, yeah. So really, it's it's more about building pressure against decks like this. What, what's funny is X getting into set five now has the best Ender Burn it's ever going to have. I mean, it's going to get some more, mm-hmm. but in the future, and it's going to get slight upgrades, but this is this is actually a pretty massive upgrade. Mm-hmm. There's a level two um, that on attack uh, r- makes your enter, your opponent lose an Ender, um, and it doesn't really have a ton of requirements. It's, it's much better than the other level two that already existed. Um, so you don't have to front load all your Ender Burn to level one like you used to and level three like you used to. Mm-hmm. Furthering that, you now have less effort Ender Burn in the form of um, Diabride Engagement Crystal. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, Diabride, basically, when something gets targeted on your field, it Ender Burns the opponent. Um, and it does it on both turns. So, cool. It's, it's, it's a pretty good card. Um, it is now easier than ever to enter burn in X. And what's funny is the enter burn really didn't matter all that much in in set four. It mattered being aggro because you... Yeah, I agree. And this was a difference between um, between the Japanese meta and, and the American meta. Again, those two have super diverged. Mm-hmm. Um, and It's been so fascinating to watch. Our, our aggro in America is so streamlined that... It, all these other decks that are like, mm, fancy, look at my synergy, or just get blown out by just, just being like, America, we hit hard. <laughs> or just... <laughs> I mean, I, I still think uh, Card Jockey Combo is, is a tier one deck. You still think so? Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. I don't know. It really is. I mean, maybe Have less... Have we tried playing a 
Have we even play tested a card jockey? Oh against? yeah, oh yeah. It still it still was favored against X, for example. This is this is this may it may not be as much anymore with the new sent or with a new piece that came out, uh, Machina Guardian Dragon, mm-hmm. which basically says, "Hey, this turn you're not your L rig's not allowed to attack." That's what the piece does. And uh, you're a card jockey player. You can tell me if that would suck on a certain turn or not. I mean. <laughs> It definitely would. Yeah, it'd just cancel out a punchline. I mean, line. it would, it would, it would be bad. It's turn three and on. Yeah. Because you're you. I mean, that would still shut down your um, what's it called? Your your once a game where you can do your little yep. DJ turntable thing. Yep. Maybe shut that down too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So can you actually read that piece verbatim if uh, that's possible? Not off the top, not off the card, yeah, but I can tell you what it does. You can. Dis, you can your choice a combo of either discard three cards or pay three enter so you can do any combo of that two enter discard one card to discard two cards pay mm-hmm. one enter whatever combo of three of that um negate your uh, if your opponent's l rig would attack this turn negate it so it just it's like the whole turn so yes right. it would stop it would stop endless punchline attacks it would stop um i mean that would be really bad against um hirana it stops the double crush nova Yes, for Nova, because Nova because generally attacks Nova twice. Because Nova has the, uh, oh man, um, no, it the, the white K. one. Kentucky? No. <laughs> Sorry, that that's red. <laughs> I'm really, guys, uh, please excuse me. I'm super rusty. <laughs> I really, really Komai. am. I apologize. Komei, that's what it is. I was I was thinking of the other white one that like I absolutely despise. I was like, no, 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 that's not the one. The chandelier. The no, bonus. not chandelier. <laughs> it's not chandelier either. <laughs> No, it's the one that's like if you target literally anything. Oh, Exia. Exia, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate her. Yeah. I, I don't like That's her. not going to change. If you're an aggro player, you're going to hate no. Exia the rest of your We Cross lifetime. No. <laughs> Please, no. Um, but... uh, yeah, it would it would do... That That would be very devastating to a deck like Nova. Yeah, or mm-hmm. or it, it does a lot of them, right? Uh, yeah. it, it hits a lot of things. It's a pretty good card. Um, I fully expect it not to be caught on by the American meta until uh, halfway through this set when suddenly people are like winning with it and they're like, oh, this is a good card. Kind of like Xenocluster, where it just took a half a year for people to realize, oh, maybe Xenocluster is a good card. Well, we still didn't see that much of it even in the ceremonies. Oh, no, we see a ton of it now, man. Well, now. Yeah, now we see it. It's like every deck <laughs> is running it. Um, it is It is a fairly good card. I mean, it also pairs really nicely when you... Um, when you're playing DXM and then, oh my goodness, I am so bad. Trigger victory? Yes, trigger victory. Trigger victory. And then Deus also has the once a game ability that makes you sacrifice a piece, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's another good one to stick in that deck. Yeah, you just I get, didn't even think of that. The, the funny the funny thing is with with uh, these these more controller mid-range decks are going to run um, Xenocluster and uh, G- M- MGD is the acronym for it. Um, oh, gotcha. and Machina Guard Dragon. I yeah, yeah, it. yeah, I got it. Um, and it is, and with Deus, you know, you're just gonna go. Which one do I not need this game? Cool, this one, and then mm. that's the one that you'll you'll exclude. I really do love it when decks are so modular like that. That's probably one of the reasons why. Deus I, is a good center. I, yeah, Deus is a great De- center. Deus is literally the most modular center I can think of. It's very, very good. Um, I wish he was green. <laughs> I wish a lot of things were green. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in the comment section down below if you if you miss big green energy. In set eleven, a new green level three signy that is very That's good came out. Literally six cents and, from and now. And I've seen the first mono green uh, deck win a tournament in like a full year, so. You know, it's possible. Um, but so what else do we have to look forward to in set five? Sure. What, what so, we, so I'll, we, I'll... we've said pretty much, haven't we said pretty much everything that we're saying goodbye to in set four? Well, we're not saying really what we're saying goodbye to. And I say goodbye in, in quotations, right? Is, is I think we're going to see Hirana No Limit a little less powerful because of MGD. Mm. Same thing with lion 1.0 um we might see mono white aggro get better because of that specifically right Ooh, who do you think would be the premier center oh, for I've, that? I've got the information you hold <gasps> your horses 
Uh, <laughs> Nay. <laughs> and I, I think we're also going to see, and this is going to make you extremely upset, I think we're going to see Ott and Bang fall off uh, because <laughs> Green is just not super great. Uh, and I hate to perpetuate that stereotype, but I will keep perpetuating that stereotype. Green is not super great. Don't mind me, I'm just crying in a corner. Dude, Osagetsun's a great card. That's the last good card they've had since uh, since set, what, one? We're on set five? I mean, Azathoth is a good card, too. That you set zero, to... zero. Yeah, I agree with you. Azathoth is a good card, but it is Ancient Surprise specific. Uh, um, I want good green cards. I like the way green operates. It just needs a little bit more Lancer for cheap. My my point is, I think aggro is going to be worse in oh. set five moving forward. We're going to see a little shift away from aggro and then. Towards mid-range, yes. Mm. And and here is, I'm going to rapid fire it off because I've already, we already did a video on the tiers once. Here's our tier update. Um, S tier, X, aggro, Deus, atomic, A tier, Deus, aggro, Hirana, mid-range, Hirana, I don't know, maybe Hirana's. Maybe that's it for A, a tier. Um, <laughs> but at the bottom of A tier, probably Hirana, No Limit, and Lion, Card Jockey Combo. B tier is going to be Madoka 2.0, uh, Tempo, that's with a white, white uh, assists. And Deus, mid range, it's going to be having like black and white. Umir, probably, is what I think. Um, Lord knows you're going to make that a B tier deck. <laughs> Just by I certainly it. will try. I mean, we've already seen it come up in the ceremony, which I was more than happy to see, but I will be playtesting Umer a lot. Yeah, I think Tomago 2.0 still very good. Um, maybe even an A tier deck, but I'm putting it in B for now. Um, Akino is my white heaven aggro person of choice. Akino 2.0. Really? 2. Yes. Interesting. Now, it's... now, why would you? What what it, what would be appealing? For Akino 2.0 over other major white centers that we've seen. Right. So the other white center is Lion that you could choose from. Just because Lion's once per game uh, opens up a lane for free. Mm -hmm. Akino's once per game basically, not once per game. Uh, it's Akino's abilities. It can basically, it'll open up one lane for free at mm -hmm. some point in your game. Pretty much guaranteed. Uh, but it'll do it at a cost. One enter. Mm -hmm. The reason why Akino is such a great center is because it doesn't play Lion as the center, so you can play Lion as an assist. Oh. <laughs> and that's why. Now, who's going to be... Now, this is for a mono-white deck. Who would you be thinking as your other assist? 100% Ange. Ange. Ooh. Yeah. Open that's up a bit the, of a callback. Really open up those lanes. Yeah, it's good. All right. White, it's playing white... So this is white aggro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You play white heaven, right? Uh -huh. And then you play white heaven because Ange's level two is white heaven. So you have two white heavens. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's good. That sounds it's interesting. Good, it's, it's a good deck, uh, and it gets a lot of upgrades in this set. I think it was an okay deck in the last set. In this set forward, it's a good deck to choose. All right. Can't wait um, for that. And then Musica 2.0 is uh, red-black, basically. It's red-black aggro, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's going to be pretty good. Following that, we go to C tier. It's going to be At and Bang. Oh. Um, and then Lion. You uh, mean Wolf? No, Lion 2.0. For oh, mono, sorry. It's basically I was on. I was on the track of like these are all green. <laughs> no, that's that's most of the green that you're gonna see in this list. <laughs> and then mm. Nova, that's the control deck. How the mighty have fallen. Oh, bottom of no. C tier. Uh, D tier is oh, gonna be no. Musica two or Musica the original one. That's a diagram. Uh, Ray, I think Umir surplants Ray as the best red blue tempo deck. Mm. Um. Then Hirana 2.0, just because it's aggro. It's not a good center, I don't think, but it's an aggro deck. Yeah, I have um, opinions on that. <laughs> then Tamago Freeze, probably the original Uchu one. We're talking about 1.0. Uh, followed by Wolf. Wolf. Yeah, Wolf 1 and Wolf 2. Oh, both um, 1 and 2. And then La uh, Nova at the very, very end. Nova 2.0. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't. The D tier, they'll still do a job. They can. They still function as a deck. They can still win a game of Wii Cross, but they're not mm -hmm. super consistency. And, and realistically, this tier, just to be clear here, is not power. It's consistency. Oh. So 
like for what example, what do you mean when you say consistency, though? Okay, so you're talking about consistent wins or how the deck no, is no, constructed, no, no. constructed, and how how much they can function their game plan, right? So Nova, okay. for example, has a very simple ideology behind it, where it wants to say, "I'm going to put out big walls that you can't vanish," and then as the game goes to turn eight. I will naturally win the game with a little bit of damage push, right? It's a control deck in that function. Um, it doesn't consistently do it because as soon as it finds itself against a discard deck, it might not have the right tools. Or if it's against a decks that have assassin, it will not win those long games, etc. Right? So it's just it. Or if it draws plan B and not plan A in the early turns, it will still lose those games too, mm. right? So it's not consistent. Um, the Hirana 1.0 deck is both consistent and somewhat explosive, but it's not as ex consistent and as explosive as X, which is why I put X in the S tier deck. Um, X is actually rather explosive and very powerful. Mm -hmm. However, the most probably consistent deck in the format now is Deus uh, with it, Ato Atomic it, Deus. It does run the most smooth it out just... of... Out of all the configurations of that team. At, literally, I'm still playing... Like, as I'm building decks, I'm like, yeah, 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 this is a strong 30 out of 40 cards deck, mm -hmm. right? And I say that for pretty much all of them. But Atomic Deck, Deus, I'm like, yeah, this is a strong 38 out of 40 cards deck. I'm like, there's two cards that I'm like, I, I, could, I, could, I could fix a, that. I could find a mm -hmm. new spot for those. And I say this as a guy who, who, who at this point... I won, by the way, I didn't say this in the, because you didn't ask me how my week cross week was. Well, you was. just went into it. I figured, well, I, I don't need to ask now. <laughs> I, I did get first place at the most recent loot card tournament. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Uh, which was, you know, loot card tournaments, by the way, if you guys aren't playing them, uh, they're pretty, they're pretty competitive. Mm -hmm. They're online every Sunday. Um, so you can play them on webcam. Mm -hmm. I highly suggest you guys try it out. Uh, they have also some of the best prizing that I've seen anyone do. And it's every Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's really good consistent play for those of you that can't get out to your locals or maybe you don't have any any locals that are close yeah. to you. I feel like I, I know that over the past couple of weeks, we've also very much struggled just getting out to our local game store and meeting up with people. So loot card tournaments were one of the godsend. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. What, the better way for us to be able to still participate in the game. Right. And so I played um, Atomic Deus because I wanted to see if the Japanese prophecies of it being obscenely powerful are true. Mm. And the answer is it's consistent. It's not, it's not as powerful as you think it is. It's not OP. Um, it's OP in maybe consideration to the other decks because the other decks aren't quite full decks right um but x is probably the closest full deck that exists because the mono red deck is really close to being complete it's a strong color for sure yeah it, it has, has a lot of really good cards that have shown to have not only consistently good play mm -hmm. but um also have very good longevity yeah so i mean how long has lancelot been relevant in the format totally totally, totally. so I, it's like it's like mon like for example mono white isn't quite consistent enough yet it has like 30 out of 40 slots are really strong and then those 10 slots are like okay they're mm -hmm. okay um and so every every part of the the um At atomic deus deck hums uh that is not to say that it's unbeatable i played it and very much was like, anytime my opponent started playing discard against me, was like, oof, this, this is wacky. Now, why is that? Why, why do you think that's so effective against Atomic Deus? Atomic uses, almost, their level ones and their level twos that are very, very strong, open up lanes uh, for quote unquote free. Um, they open up lanes by you discarding cards. Mm. So oh. if you have no cards to discard... You're, you're out of luck. It's not going right. to Right. You can't pay. Um, and, Interesting. And it actually, it it's it's good by limiting the options as well, um, right? Because, like, Atomic Deus needs Atomic Signy to function, and only 20 to 24 of its card slots are atoms. Mm. So if you discard a bit, you're limiting how many atoms they have, and that that can do a very serious trick. Oh, so by discarding, you're actually taking away two parts of Atomic Deus's win condition. Right, literally their fodder as well as their um, their choices. Mm. Both of them matter quite a bit. Huh. Um, the other way to win against Atomic Deus, and this is mostly a X suggestion, and if anyone's listening to, I think this would be the key takeaway from us talking here. 
Uh, and, and guys, it's mostly me talking just because I've played a lot of Wii Cross and Tiffany has been doing a lot of real life. So, <laughs> so she's literally taking notes here, being like, I'm studying, getting ready. I know. I, re- I, I, I appreciate y'all allowing me to take some time off. I am very rusty. And just thank you so much for your patience. It's good to be back. Thank you. <laughs> so I think we're now entering a meta with set five at the very high levels of play here. And, and what I would prep myself for is recognizing that aggro's not dead yet. Um, aggro still has all the tools it needs to win, but it needs to recognize why it's losing its games now, right? Mm-hmm. X will lose against Atomic Deus a lot of the time, mostly because aggro players are just throwing their face headlong into the match and not recognizing why they're losing. It is this. Clap and disrespect are strong cards. They're the reason you're losing. By by the opponent clapping or disrespecting, they are gaining an advantage that will let them get to turn five or turn six, and by that point, you're out of gas, and they will beat you because of it. Mm -hmm. The correct move is not to win the long game. You're an aggro deck. Win the short game. How do you do that? Well, you recognize what makes Lion and, uh, and Madoka tick. Literally, what do you need to do in order to, to play Lion and, and, and Madoka? Tiffy, I mean, you got the answer to that one. I mean, you got to play blue and white as a start. <laughs> sure, you're right there. But what do you literally need to do to play them? I mean, you have to pay Enter. Correct. And what's the other thing that you got to do? Uh, you got to filter your deck? Discard the cards. Discard, that's all right. Right. So, so the way to beat them is to make them not be able to do their full effect. So if you see your opponent chilling with three enter, mm-hmm. kill that enter. Right? If they if their enter goes down to one, they can't. And, and they might have, for example, you've got to bear in mind there's the ever-present uh, Xenocluster that'll stop that. Um, right. Xenocluster will also stop um, the cards in hand thing. Right. I mean... Draw you cards. For sure. If you if one of the ways that you're paying for those would be not only paying the enter to grow, the additional enter for the additional effects, but also the discarding. If you're discarding down, then that's one more form of, you know, currency that you're removing. Right, from right, right. And and you get the ability to go, um, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and um you can enter burn them early. This is my favorite tactic to do. Enter burn them early, right? And then in the late game, if they haven't, if they're, they clearly still probably have the Xeno cluster, stop enter burning them. <laughs> Just don't let them have the chance to put three enter out there because of it, right? You're winning that game if you see them at four enter or three enter, right? They can't do the full, they can't do the full Madoka uh, clap mm-hmm. on you. Um, if they Xeno cluster early, Mm-hmm. which I don't, I still don't know if it's correct to Xeno cluster early or not in response to it. Well, I also don't know if it's correct to Xeno cluster late either. Exactly. Because they could just stop enter burning. Exactly. I don't, I don't know what the right move is. And, and I'll tell you what, against at loot, at the loot card tournament, I did both. <laughs> one, one game I enter, the guy enter burned me on turn two and I went Xeno cluster and I'll Madoka clap. And he was like, Whoa, that's a, I wasn't expecting you to pull the clap that early. And I was like, yep, well, I was there. And I'd rather get it done now than, you know, be deprived of this enter later. Um, and then mm-hmm. the second time around with X, I was like, he hasn't pulled the trigger on his assassin yet. I think I need to wait on this one. So it might be a 50-50. I don't know when the right move is. Um, but if you manage to get them to pull the uh, Xenocluster early, mm-hmm. then it's then it's no longer relevant and you can now work around that, right? You don't need to force their hand. You can always do one damage with a Madoka clap open, force them to either Madoka clap here or you get in safely for one damage. Mm-hmm. You can play a little bit of a longer game. I don't like that option, but it is it is an option. Um, but if you can keep them off of the Madoka clap, that'll help. Another card that really helps with the Madoka clap is Tengu. No one plays it right now. And for good reason. It's difficult to pull off. I mean, you were doing it for the content creator circuit i don't know if i would call it pulling it off but i was playing it <laughs> yeah i was saying it's difficult to pull off right now um there will be a card in set seven that makes it ridiculously easy to pull off mm-hmm. um but for right now it's difficult to pull off and tengu has the ability to um not be downed when attacking and that stops madoka clap and you got to remember that 
we're entering a uh, we're entering a world where you're going to see less lion disrespects and more Madoka claps because of Atomic Deus. Gotcha. So it it ends up being if you're an aggro deck, you need to learn how to beat these ever present three stop L rigs. So kind of going off of that, just as we were talking, and as you guys know, I'm like taking notes as we're talking. Um, I think now more than ever, it will be very important for the aggro player to truly understand and know how to implement the art of the catch 22. Mm -hmm. Because as much as you want to push damage in aggro, that's always going to be your number one thing. Mm -hmm. You also have to learn how to force your opponent's hand to grow. Yep. And there's a lot of different ways that you can set up catch 22s in we cross so you become the best aggro players know how to force and when to force a catch 22 so that a turn and a half later they will win yep and that's something that we've always said about about aggro is that they're not as aggro players are not as dumb as you think they are yeah so that would be the note that i would give now obviously we've we've stated earlier that aggro is going to be a little bit weaker but catch 22s will always benefit the weak cross player. Right, totally. And I and I think that's the world that we live in right now is that if you decide that you want to play aggro, you need to have a plan against a Madoka clap or a um a line disrespect. Another good way, for example, is and this is one of the reasons why I still think no limit is quite, actually quite strong. Um the classic no limit of I'm enter burning you, right? Mm. With with its uh it's got the not the glory grow to the top, to the top. which I still think is a great card. Um, yeah, you don't see it as much. Yeah, because you just don't see um, white. You don't see you don't see no limit as much anymore. But I still think no limit's a perfectly acceptable deck. One so. one of the things that I actually think it does better is I actually do believe it plays better against Atomic Deus because it's got rays that make your opponent discard, mm -hmm. and it has Enter Burn. It still has access to all the red Enter Burn that 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 um that mm -hmm. like uh, X has, with the exception of Kentucky. Um and it. Uh, it puts your opponent in that catch-22 that you're talking about. Okay, you want a Xeno Cluster, go for it. Would you like to recover your hand, or would you like to recover your Enter? Right. Can't do both. Hmm. And that's a pretty good one against five uh, these these three-stop uh, L-Rigs. And that's just that's just one more form of a catch-22. Correct, yeah. Which, which resource are you going to gain back? Because you can't have both. Right. Interesting. Um, so how, how fascinating. I still think it's it's very it's a very good choice for that that world. Um, and since we're talking about catch twenty twos, uh, defensive positioning. This is the first time I've ever felt rewarded by doing defensive p positioning in we cross with uh, with the atomic Deus deck. Mm -hmm. um, it has so many ways to play defensive. But not in the, and it's weird, playing defensive in We Cross is not shutting something down completely. You, you can't do that in We Cross. Can you give us a, like a board example of what um, defensive positioning would be like? Sure. So, so let's pretend you're playing Hanj, which is a level three that gives uh, itself, uh, I'm oversimplifying here, but mm -hmm. it gives itself 3,000 power and gives the things next to it, I think, 5,000 power? No, mm -hmm. it gives itself 5,000 power, and it gives the things next to it 3,000 power. That's right? pretty, that's a lot. Yeah, it's good. Um, so it becomes on your opponent's turn, if you're doing it correctly, with playing X, Exia, excuse me, it becomes a 15k. Uh, Exia becomes a 15k. Mm -hmm. And then if you play a um, uh, Ishikiri Maru, which is a 12k level 2, that becomes a 15k. Mm -hmm. So you just have a white wall of 15k, 15k, 15k. You look at your opponent and you go, go ahead. And if they get rid of the problem signy, which is the Hanj, which is stopping it from being in, able to get rid of, uh, it's like black and red's removal can get rid of uh, 12Ks and lower. Mm -hmm. um, so if they get rid of the Hanj, so that way they can then target other things, Exia's ability kicks in and shuts down a lane. Right. Right. So that's defensive playing. Gotcha. You're not stopping the opponents completely, but you have set up a very difficult to deal with board state. Yeah, you're slowing them down a right. lot. Right, and like H2O does that. H2O ha says, if this were to leave the field, 
outside of battle or negative effects. I'm oversimplifying again, guys. Um, you can take the card that's under it because it's a rise card and put that in the trash and then it stays in the field. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just difficult to deal with. And it's also a 13k. Gotcha. So it's it's just difficult to, for your opponents to deal with. Right. You're you're basically saying that they have to spend more resources than normal right. to be able to push through damage, which right. is quite annoying when you can, you know, lose a life cloth to yeah. refresh. And, and the atomic deck has at least six life bursts that say grab a card either from your deck or your trash, put it on the field, and then it plays a bunch of things that say when this enters the field, remove target Signy. Mm-hmm. So you can end up closing down two lanes with these life bursts, right? Like it's just it's just got very good defensive positioning. It doesn't stop the opponent dead in their tracks, but it definitely delays the game till turn five, turn six when it all comes together. Right. And that's ideally the the meta that we're looking forward to is going back to basically set do, do, do you know how hard it is to remove a 13k that's resistant to removal and it has a soul on it? Like it's yes, I do so know annoying. actually. I do it's know what so that feels annoying. like. <laughs> um, I've been that deck and I've played against that deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm just saying, like it, it. That's that's the games that we're looking at now. Is I think the meta slowing down. Not by a lot, but by a little bit, is no longer a turn four format and and set five. It's probably a turn five format, which sometimes it's turn six, sometimes it's a turn four. In the set prior, it was sometimes a turn three format, sometimes a turn five format, but always a turn four format. Mm. This is now the opposite. It's always a turn five format. It's going to be a turn four format sometimes. It's going to be a turn... uh, six format but the aggro decks you gotta you gotta figure out a way to get to that turn five now because the opponent will clap or disrespect you that's it yeah i don't yeah that's yeah Mm. Mm. there's a mm. it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of sort of slower aggro not quite mid-range decks are going to be built and i I don't even think it's slower aggro i think you just need to figure out a way to turn off clap and disrespect Hmm. right like and and red gets access to some of that green to a lesser extent and starting to get access to it in japan Mm -hmm. um which is cool i think those are the colors that probably need it um and then there's white that's just like through your field and just bounces everything Um, that's a nice signal you have you can take that back (laughs) that's one of the reasons why mono white aggro is actually a pretty okay choice yeah Uh, it was it was so cool seeing that come up in the ceremony yeah it's not a full deck yet but it is a pretty it's close to full deck now so Mm -hmm. again b tier is what i was saying Mm -hmm. um so it doesn't always go your way but it will somewhat consistently go your way 85 to 90 percent of the time yeah i think we're definitely starting to skew away towards much more optimal decks versus viable decks as the meta um, expands. And now that we've got more experienced players um, that are going to be a lot more competitive, it's really fun to play those viable decks as we've like uh, tiered them up for you. But do keep in mind that it's it's going to be an uphill battle from this point. Yeah, I mean, we are... Always play what you want to play. The card, but... it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse that the card pool is getting deeper. As the card pool just gets deeper and deeper and deeper, it means that games are going to get more and more complicated because mm-hmm. there's going to be more and more tiny things that affect it. Like, for example, yeah. I recently it's saw... A lot to keep track of. Someone on the opposite side having an Exia and then someone playing Ange, mm-hmm. or not Ange, excuse me, um, Akino 2.0. And Akino 2.0 targets always. It always targets. Even if you don't pay for it and you don't do the effect, it targets. Which means that Exia, as goes Exia off. shuts down a lane regardless of what you do. Um, and you have to play around it. Like, And that's just the thing. is, It's always it's always going to get a little deeper mm-hmm. than that. Because you just, you're going to run into tiny, um, tiny small edges that will help you win your game. Mm-hmm. as the card pool gets deeper mm-hmm. the plus side is you end up with weird decks being more viable and probably a a a, a more diverse mm-hmm. not diverse in terms to be clear here not diverse in terms of like everyone's like oh well i want nova to be good or oh i want um bang to be good or whatever these maybe these people are just me uh <laughs> screaming <laughs> that but it's not diverse in the fact that every every l rig could win you the game Mm -hmm. it's diverse in the fact that the strategies that you're seeing are getting more and more diverse 
set one and set set zero and set one were aggro strategies. Set three, a control deck showed up, and it was the most powerful deck. And then set four, aggro took it back. Set five is cool in the fact that there's mid-range and aggro now. And in that, there's di- there's divides, right? When we were talking aggro before, it was just red. It was just red aggro. That's it. But now yeah. we're talking about um, enter burn strategies. We're talking about red aggro damage push, mm-hmm. We're ta- like with Assassin. And we're talking about um, mono white aggro. And when we're talking about um, uh, mid-range strategies, we're, we're starting to see some slower mid-range and some mid-range mid-range and some faster mid-ranges, mm-hmm. uh, which is cool. I mean, the fact that like, and some tempo decks are starting to rear their their heads around. Like, yeah. Mirror is a tempo deck that I think is actually pretty good. I'm very excited to try it. Um, I, I've even I've even started considering like, oh, what if you team break with Umir and you do um you do a death and taxes kind of strategy like mm-hmm. that that theoretically could could do pretty well and you can argue whether death and taxes is a mid range tempo or aggro strategy because Magic the Gathering people have had that I argument mean, for years. You know, let us know in the comments below what you guys think. But uh, what I'm saying is like there's 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 different speeds to the format now, which is yes. pretty cool. It to is see. cool. We're we're getting we're kind of skewing more and more away from that rock, paper, scissors format because there's so much more happening in the meta right now. And especially with, you know, DXM coming in and being like, hey, here's this new mechanic called Souls. Deal with it. Right. And it, it just like, you know, it, it shakes everything up, well, which like, is a good thing. So, for example, one of the things that um, I was I was playing against a discard strategy, and I had the privilege of being able to watch this deck run the turn prior or the 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 round prior because I finished my match quickly, um, and I watched the opponent like kind of lose, and the reason was because they weren't they were prioritizing their card advantage, and they were trying to make the opponent they were trying to discard the opponent out, and I thought about it for a little bit, and I went. I think I'm actually the faster deck in this in this scenario. And instead of prioritizing card advantage, trying to keep my hand at six, I was like, as long as I go into as long as I go into my main phase with three cards in hand, I'm mm-hmm. good. Right? That's a mm-hmm. full field. I learned that strategy from you playing X, or playing playing Ot, by the way. Oh. As, as long as I've got three cards to put down on the field, I'm probably okay. Well, that's if you're running a whole Signy deck. I know, I know, with I know, no I know, spells. I but so, so well, the only spell I was running was a thing that can't trips, so it could it draws another card as soon as I can't use trips? it. Can't Can't trip is when you use a spell and it draws another card. Oh, okay. So it's basically quote unquote free. Okay. Like it doesn't cost a resource. It costs a resource in terms of your enter, but it didn't cost you a card in your hand. Hmm. Um, that's why uh, it was. It's it's random drain. By the way, random drain, great card. Makes your opponent discard a card and you don't lose one card because you get to draw the, the card. Mm-hmm. So it replaces itself. Um, and I was like, yeah, as long as I can open up three. So so, so it was basically like, all right, I'm just going to keep my H2s in hand because when they come into play, you can draw a card. Mm-hmm. I was like, there you go. There you go. I figured, found a way. I'm just going to do that. And then... Uh, I'll use my once per game. And I was running death deck because I didn't have an MGD. It really worked out very well, though. So mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, that'll be fine. He'll discard my hand down to zero. Uh, on turn three, I'll use my once per game and draw an extra card. And then I'll turn four, use my, uh, my, uh, I'll use my, my, my Xeno cluster to draw some cards. And then I'll use my other piece to draw some more cards. That'll get me to turn six. And that's really all I need to get. Um, so I did that and it worked. Right. Like and that's one of those things where, like you were saying, it's it's less about rock, paper, scissors and more about making tiny edges that will win you the game now. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I like it because we've got decks that don't neatly line up to each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I just said, Atomic Deus probably wins against X, but probably loses against um, Hirana No Limit. Mm-hmm. And they're both aggro decks. But Hirana also attacks the hand aside from attacking the, um, attacking the inner. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot, a lot more going on in the decks nowadays than there has ever been. Yeah. Which is really exciting because it's, as we always say, variety is the spice if we cross. It is what you say. And we're, well, I mean, we're getting back into it now because I felt like, I felt like in set, uh, not so much in set four, but definitely in set three, we really had this whole like rock, paper, scissors meta 
happening, which we had gone into before kind of like how how that cycle would work. And I got to tell you, it was kind of like deflating yeah. in a way, because yeah. if you were playing a deck and you knew that that the other deck that you're going up against is just a bad matchup, it doesn't like right. there's there's it leaves little hope for you to try your best. But I feel like you in, run, the meta, you in the meta through. coming up, now there's a whole lot, whole more like uh, the thought process is, well, I know this is going to be a difficult matchup, but maybe there's something that I can do to kind of squeak it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or yeah, maybe yeah. maybe they won't flip a life burst, and that's gonna that's gonna really that's gonna flip the, this game the for me. Yeah, you know, like it's we're we're getting into. I don't know. It's it's getting into more a little bit more like chess. Yes. Um, well. Well, you know, where there's like a lot of small decisions that you have to make in each turn now. And you kind of, you, in every deck, I think you have to look ahead at least two turns. I, yes, I agree with that. I, I, the, the disagreement that I'll make is chess is a fixed game and basically they run through the motions and they hope someone will make a mistake is, is really what ends up happening. I mean, let's be honest. We cross is kind of like speed chess, like your two and a half turns almost. Well, the it's, first it's, couple turns. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like your first like two turns, it's kind of like, all right, we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. And then, and then you get to that next turn and everyone's like, okay, hold on, wait, now I have to start thinking right. about everything. I, I think the difference is ch that chess has a determinant amount of moves it can make and based on what your opponent makes you make the counter move and sometimes it just you end up in a scenario where you're running through the motions but the game the outcome's already determined mm. uh, and we cross doesn't do that because it has enough for variation within the deck itself that you never that really is, run to that scenario yes that is true but, i mean a life burst and a top deck can always make or break yeah, yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the funny thing with that is with We Cross, and, and some people say this is a detractor of the game, but I actually love it as part of the game, is that it does make a difference. And and if I had to give it a number, I'd equate it to a 7% variable. Mm. Um, so that if your deck was uh, in a matchup and you are at 55% favored, you've got that extra 5% you're likely going to win. The opponent hits a certain life burst, it's a 7%. <laughs> you're like, oh, Wait, I'm not favored to win it anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like so, yeah. so that's that's sort of what happens with you cross, and and the percentages are way more tighter than people give it credit for. Like, I'm saying X and Deus are S tier, right? Mm -hmm. And they're S tier. I haven't done the math on on this format, so excuse me. I did the math on the last format, um, but they're probably only S tier by four percent, right? The next best deck is probably only four percent or lower worse than 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 that probably closer to three percent to be honest with you the last set in set four and one of the reasons why i actually didn't like it all that much was because the all the decks were so evenly favored to win that it became very much a life burst game because whoever had the best life bursts won that game or whoever won the coin toss won that game mm -hmm. for whoever went first or mm -hmm. second because it ended up being that the most your deck was ever favored against any other deck was 52% against 48%. And like I said, Life Burst could account for 7%. And that that means yeah. that the game goes completely wonky in just uh, like an early Life Burst. Like, for example, when you were playing against the X versus X matchup, if you went turn two, you were probably going to win because you were attacking first. Mm -hmm. However, if the, you hit the opponent and there's a Life Burst that stops your second attack, you are now no longer likely to win. The opponent yeah. is not likely to win. I mean, we're, I like to call it, we're getting into like Olympic decimals at this point where like you're really cutting it close in a lot of games. Yeah. Um, which is why going back to what you said earlier, like sometimes there's games that you're just like, wow, I really could have done something different. And that th those things is what cost me the game. Or you play a perfect game and it's still like, not that it doesn't matter, but you can play a perfect game and the outcome still won't. Yeah. go a certain way which is what makes this game exciting I, personally I, I hate i will openly admit this is a pet peeve of mine uh whenever an opponent loses to me and goes man i lost to life bursts i always go like nah, you're minimizing my uh, achievements here as well i i did some good things too mm -hmm. um, but I, it is true sometimes you do your best and you look back at it and you go yep i lost because of life bursts and mm -hmm. that's okay that's part of this game. It's part mm -hmm. of the variable. 
Um, I think it's more important. It's very, it's very easy to use life bursts as a um, excuse to not be able to better your own game because mm. you're not thinking critically and you're just being like, I lost a life bursts. But then you got to remember, you're the one who put those life bursts in the deck and the opponent put his life bursts in the deck or his or her, excuse me. And, um, and if you did different life bursts, maybe the outcome would have been different. You got to think about that as a deck builder. So, or if you need to, if you keep coming up against the same life bursts and they're all doing, and they're all hindering your game in the same way, how can you adjust your play deck around to it, response? Right? If you look back, if you look at white decks, like generally speaking, they vanish up Signy. And I know common sense is to attack with your lowest Signy first to get around the 8,000 or less life bursts. But when you're up against a mono white deck, you might consider something differently mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. it's just it's just some kind of it's some kind of thoughts that you have to put in your deck yeah sometimes you look at your opponent's trash and you go like how many lapises do you have in the trash and they go four and you go nah then i should be attacking with my big signy now because yeah. Of this. um yeah. so so you have yeah yeah this is no longer a game where being out life burst is as huge because you're getting an extra turn in there probably but it's still a game that has life bursts in it <laughs> and, and 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 the truth is uh, someone could be playing one of these d tier decks that i have mm -hmm. here like musica 1.0 with diagram and they still might beat you because you go trigger victory oh akufuku and they go oh sucks for me <laughs> i love a good akufuku in the morning <laughs> <laughs> you know it's very good in that scenario yeah but my my, my point is that like Look, man, as long as as long as you're playing, in my opinion, at high level we cross, if you're playing one of these B tiered, maybe even C tiered and up decks, you are still likely going to win a tournament. It yeah, might be a little less consistently, a but you still might likely win a tournament. And the cool thing is if you're really good at that specific deck, as we've seen with other people when we cross, you're likely to win the tournament still. Mm -hmm. Like because there's a little bit of edge of playing a deck that's operates wacky. I agree. And that's kind of why we always tell, that's why we always tell you fellow selectors, you just play what you want, play what you really like. Because especially now in I've... this format, you know, you, you still have a fighting chance. You might, you, the, the numbers may be against you. You may have disadvantaged matchups. Not by a ton. But <sighs> yeah, at this point, you never know. And, and Which I, is why I will still play Ancient Surprise. <laughs> I, I, the caveat I will say to that is build a deck with Strike Theory in mind still, right? Because yeah. if you can't actually hit the required amount of times to win a game, it doesn't matter. What you're yeah. playing, you're not going to win that game. <laughs> if if you haven't seen or watched or listened to the Strike Theory video that Andrew put out, you really should. It's it's a really good thing to keep in mind when you're building your deck or even just when you're playing. Like 10 out of 10 yeah. would recommend. Worth mentioning, we are now going to a turn five format. So that's like it's something to change in, in Strike Theory. Strike Theory, the video I put down was like, we're going to a turn four format. Yeah, it, it's turn five now. So so you might want to yeah, adjust the numbers your numbers. Yeah, the numbers might change. The I feel like the... Uh, the thought process still stands. Oh, one hundred percent. So it grows. It grows with the speed of the format still. Right. Um, but in the end of the day, the reason why I made strike theory is because we cross is a proactive game, and you mm -hmm. need to be. You need to. You can't play the game. You can play the game somewhat defensively, but you can't play it completely defensively. Mm -hmm. You will not win that game. Um, so you have to consider how you're still smacking your opponents in the face. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that is that's kind of. Is that everything we want to cover for set five? Yeah, it's goodbye set four. Hello set five. Hello set five. Are you curious about set five? I am Miko Miko. I, I have <laughs> nothing else to add to it other than Miko Miko. An attempt was made. <laughs> Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Life First Podcast. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, or if you just want to disagree with us, uh, please <laughs> comment uh, your, your thoughts and feelings in the comment section down below. Please make sure you subscribe so you never miss a podcast where we talk about all the We Cross things, and may you always flip a life first. An Akufuku on a trigger victory. An Akufuku in the morning. Bye!